an important scientific fact. European album is the best format for comics, period. But having said that, its perfect size and measurements is also one of the biggest obstacles why the European comic album hasn't taken off and become popular outside Europe. I thought it was about time to talk about the format itself. Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. I was offline for a while as uh, I had a really bad case of flu, but it's behind me now and I'm able to continue with my videos. As some of you may know, I have been doing this series about European comics. And within that series, I have been dividing the whole big uh, subject of European comics into very small sections. And currently I've been talking about more about terms than actual certain comic series or characters. And this particular video is some kind of a mix of that because I am going to be talking about the European albums, but it's also a kind of a term that I want to open. Now, why would I do a video just about the album as a format? Well, there's a good reason for that. The European album is one of the most important images of European comics. It's one of those things that define European comics very well. It is a European thing. It came out of Europe. And in my quest to spread the word of European comics, I feel that the album as a format is it's one of the best ways to market the European comics. The album format is massively popular in Europe. Uh, it, it has become the standard. But historically, the, the album format has all, also been the obstacle for the European comics to spread out to certain important markets like USA. Many stores and dealers thought that this was way too big size. It was the wrong size for them. And often it was also complained that there's not enough content within an album. I think that both of those comments are factually incorrect. But before going into them, let's take a look at the history of the comic album. The album as a format became popular uh, after 1945. That, so that's after the World War II. However, that was not the birth of the album. Uh, albums existed even before the World War II. The first albums were published in 1930s. And that's a long way off if you think about it. 1930, that's closer to 1800 something than to 2000 anything. I, I mean, that's a long way off. So, so there's a long history for the albums. And the reason why I'm waving the Tintin album here is that it's often thought that Tintin was the first album ever. And that started the, the rise of the European album format. Historically, that's a bit incorrect as there, there was another comic series that was published in album format a year or two before the first Tintin, which was the Tintin in, in the land of the Soviets. But that comic never really took off outside the French speaking area. So history it has now decided that it's Tintin. And I feel that it's not that important who it was, but I understand why all these um, achievements are easily given to Tintin, as Tintin was first in many things in European comics, not just a former thing, but it was there in the beginning. If it, if it wasn't the first, it was at least in the among the first. For European comics, Tintin is like the singularity. It's the point where the Big Bang happened and the uh, universe of European comics started to expand. So I'm okay to giving this first album ever achievement to Tintin also. And in case you're not familiar with Tintin, this album is not um, Tintin in the land of the Soviet. This album came uh, a bit later. So the format was given the name album and it was called the comic album, comics album or PD, Bande Dessine album. And very often outside Europe, uh, in USA particularly, these albums are often referred to as graphic novels. The graphic novel term is something that you basically never ever hear anywhere in Europe when you're talking about albums. There are certain longer and thicker book-like uh, comics that might be referred to as graphic novels, but albums really ne never hear. And just like in my previous videos when I was talking about terms, it just shows how these popular terms within this hobby they mean a bit different things depending on uh, where you are. 
So in my opinion, you can't really make mistakes with the terms. You just call them what you want. And, and as long as people understand each other, it doesn't matter. But every time someone calls an album a graphic novel, I'm, I'm, the first thought is for me is like, uh, but that, that's an album, that's not a graphic novel. It, it's just an automatic reaction, I guess. Although album is kind of standard, not everything is set in stone. There are different sizes and even different page counts. But usually the page count is between 48 and 64. Most of the albums are usually 48 pages, but they can be longer. Due to the printing process, they are usually, the page count is so, so that it has to be divided by eight to work. That's how the printing machines work. And that's how they make, physically make the book. And that's how the page, those page counts became the, the standard and, or the norm. Yes, it's possible to do any page count, but 48, 64 between those are most of the albums you'll ever see. Having said that, Tintin, for example, before the World War II, the albums were much, much longer. They were even 120 to 140 pages. But after the World War II, there was a massive shortage of paper and they needed to cut down the page count. But as they decreased the page count, it was not a total loss as uh, they, at the same time, they also added colors to the albums. Now you might think that 120 page to 140 page is much better than 48 to 64. But in my opinion, the stories became better. Actually, Tintin is a very good uh, example. As uh, Erze redid his first Tintin albums, which were over 100 pages, he redraw them later and published them as um, in a shorter version. And in my opinion, the shorter colored versions are much better as stories. They are more dense, more logical, and there's less running around for nothing in the story. So in my opinion, I think that it was just one of those necessary pressures given to creators to uh, up their game. And the way it worked in the beginning was that none of these comics were first published in albums. They were published in those newspapers and later in the comic book magazines. And they were serialized so that you only got few pages uh, at a time. And then you had to wait until the next volume of the magazine or the next newspaper came out. And then you got a little bit more of the story. And it could easily take one year to complete the whole story. After these adventures were finalized in those magazines or newspapers, then they were later collected into albums. And it took easily one or two years before the album came out after the adventure has already ended in the magazine. But it was not only the long adventures that were collected into albums. Also, shorter stories were collected into album formats and also the um, newspaper strips, which were only maybe three panels long. And of course, uh, the publishers have to wait until enough strips have been published that they could make enough content for a full album. And the same thing for short stories. And there's one peculiar fact about European albums as a format. And it's such a fact that not even all Europeans are aware of it. I have already seen that in, in the comics se section of my videos. So I thought this is a good detail to talk about. Today, albums are published both in soft cover and in hard cover in most of the European countries. But this was not always the case. Even in the very beginning when the album format took off and it took off in the Franco-Belgian comic scene, that's where it originated. The French and the Belgian publishers realized that when they collected their serialized adventure or short stories or strips into album format, they started selling really well. So there was clearly demand for them, which is good for business. However, they decided a certain thing about albums that has been egoed through the whole Europe for decades. What happened is that they decided that they print the albums as soft cover in Belgium and all the same albums were printed in hardcover for the French audience. The soft cover in albums means that it's, it's actually kind of a cardboard. So it, it's not paper, it's not thicker paper. This is a cardboard, so it's much heavier um, cover than let's say in a Superman or Spider-Man comic. But there's still a very clear difference between this and the hardcover. You can't bend these hardcovers. And the idea to print the comics in hardcover for French market was to keep the books more 
high-end profile to make them more respectable. And even though there might have been some soft covers in the beginning, the fact is that French people don't really know that there are other than hardcover albums out there. Sometimes it comes as a shock for them, but they've been pampered with this. But if you look at the respect and the c comic scene in the French, I think, you know, they're worth it too. And when the same comics were uh, translated for the Flemish uh, Belgian market, they came out in soft cover. And it's because comic book back then didn't have the same cultural status as they have now. Of course, the soft cover is cheaper to make, but you have to do that for competition if your market isn't craving for comics, you know, if it's uh, not seen as that high end product. Today, the hardcover albums are becoming more and more standard also in other countries. I don't know exactly how they spread out this hardcover uh, thing, how, how it has spread out in each market. Maybe you can comment uh, about your own country down below so we can track that down. But I can say for the Finnish market that it took me decades before I saw a hardcover uh, album in Finnish. They were always like this. And I have to say that when I first saw an hardcover album, it did feel like it was something special, like it was more high-end product. But at the same time, I am so accustomed to this, like I'm indoctrinated to this soft cover format that it's not that important for me. And one more a bit surprising technical detail about the albums is that albums didn't really receive their own ISBN numbers until the 70s. And I can show you an example. Here are two Asterix albums. This one has ISBN number and this one doesn't. It's because this is more modern print. And this is a very old printing that I have here. Could be the first printing. So um, if we look at this one, it has the ISBN number in it. Usually I don't pay much attention to the ISBN numbers, but within comics, it has a very important thing because when, you, when the book is given this ISBN number, it's like a serial number that only this book has. In a way, it means that this has been accepted as a real book. And if we look at the older printing of this Asterix album, there's no ISBN number here. And it tells you of the status of comic book itself. They were just seen as something that was printed for children. They were just something in the newsstands, not really worth cataloging in, in a way. But the fact that they were giving these ISBN numbers, it just shows you how important these comic albums became in the market. Albums were finally accepted as a real thing, like a real book. Of course, today, most of the adventures of any characters are published direct to albums. And that's because most of the comic book magazines have uh, ceased to exist. But of course, with the short stories and, and newspaper strips particularly, they still need to be published elsewhere, one by one, so that there are enough of them for the publisher to collect them into an album form. And I think it's good to conclude the history part of the album format is this current day. Album has become th the norm the standard in European comics. So it's not anymore just the Franco-Belgian scene, although it originated from there, it has spread to all of the countries. And I believe that all of the European countries have album as a standard format, even for their uh, own comics that originate from their countries. However, there is an exception. UK, United Kingdom has always been kind of the separate thing. So when we are talking about the European comics, UK is a completely different case. Maybe I'll dig into that subject later, but just so you know that UK hasn't really followed uh, the rest of the Europe. Their comics culture was built in a different way and it's more connected, maybe obviously with the language and all, it's more connected to USA. And although I'm ready to argue with anyone that album is the most important format of comics in Europe. It's not the only one. And here is another very popular comic book format in Europe. It's a pocket book of Walt Disney Comics. Now you might think Walt Disney Comics isn't that USA. Well, the company is USA, but the stories in these pocket books are made in Europe. Maybe the very first ones had some stories originated from USA, not sure but this is at least 99%. Uh, 
European thing and there are over 500 of these pocket books the standard ones and then there are the special publications there might be a hundred of them so this is a very successful format and among the Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse fans this is a very popular thing to collect album as a format has become so popular within Europe that many of the foreign comics that were not originally an album format they are published in album format in Europe. Like already in the 70s, I remember reading Karl Barks stories in album format. Many of those stories were published, at least in Finland, they published in, in an album format. Also many popular newspaper strips, they are collected into album formats in Europe, like uh, Calvin and Hobbes, for example. And here I have a few examples of my own also. Return of the Jedi. This is one of my oldest comics. I don't know the original format of these stories, but I know that pages are coming off from this story. <clears throat> it's not the best art ever, but it's the return of the Jedi. And I know this inside out. And, and it's also, this is the only format I've seen. This is the format I think that it should be in. And here is another classic, Batman Killing Joke. This copy is from 1989, so I've read it a few times, but it works, works very well. Nice art, big pictures, why not? And for those saying that the US comic is the best format for all of these and there is not enough content in the European albums because the page count is so low, this is 48 pages, the regular European album size. Okay, so I have been now babbling about the European comic album format, that it's the best thing ever. So why isn't it popular elsewhere? If it's as good as I say, why hasn't it really taken off, let's say in USA? Well, to put it shortly, if you are from USA, the problem is...